Guess who's back? I know there's a new Nukes Top 5. It has a really cool title. It's Give You the Brown Pants. Oh, and the Yellow Pants. I didn't even see they uploaded another one. Jesus Christ, it's the full combo. This, These five will give you the brown, and these will give you the yellow. Jesus. No pants are safe. We'll do one nukes top five before it gets too scary. I'll get I'll get the brown pants, and that's it. Watcher, popular former BuzzFeed Unsolved host Shane and Ryan are back with an all new paranormal investigation series called Ghost Files over on their very own YouTube channel, Watcher. Now, for those of you who don't know the series, Shane is a diehard skeptic who does not believe in ghosts at all. But what an Ryan, idiot! On the other hand, does believe in the supernatural, and often finds himself scared senseless on these paranormal investigations. All right, apparently, this is where a recurring ghost is seen. I don't even know what I'm looking at. What is this? Oh, oh God, what are you? Hey, man, calm down. You piece of shit. My mic went out, and then I was looking for you. He's crouching in here like some kind of cave creature. And then I, all I did was I went. That was a good one. Oh yeah, so you say say hello to you. You're looking for me while grunting like a zombie. Uh, so this time the two friends set out to investigate the allegedly haunted Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. The massive hospital was built in 1910 to treat patients suffering from tuberculosis. Jesus Christ. Shockingly, Holy fuck, Bobby. it is estimated that around 63,000 people Holy lost shit. their lives inside the sanatorium walls. Maybe the fat so it's no there, wonder Bobby. that Waverly Hills is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in America. Also, just a little fun fact. We've seen this exact same building in a thousand other videos. So many YouTubers and production crews use the same fucking place. I mean, for good reason, it looks like a Call of Duty 4 map. Like, I get it. But, uh, one thing that I'm certain of is there's no ghosts in there. I've seen it inside and out. Now, it's the brown course, pants. Some sounds have more to do with bad dietary choices than the paranormal. This isn't even no scary. Worries, because things are about to get weird. Things are used to break in the past, many visitors and paranormal investigators have reported hearing creepy, unexplained humming in the morgue of the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. When Shane and Ryan explore the area, this happens. Something seems to react to the investigators' requests and hums not once. They can't but talk. Twice. Well, why can it hum? Both Shane and Ryan. The fact it hums tells me that it's able to make noise. Even okay, even if you don't want to use words, just like hum viciously. <laughs> Like even bound or something. He wants his presence to be known. Well, then really commit to. And to this day, they still have no explanation for the creepy sounds. The reason why Shane never gets anything in his solo investigations is because uh, he's an enormous d bag. Something very strange also happens. Ben shits himself when again. Shane finally makes his way back to Ryan and the rest of the team. He admits that at some point he believed he might not have been alone. So I didn't actually react to it in the moment. I love the idea of ghost hunting. It's something we've always wanted to do, but actually doing it is so fucking boring. Unless you set up like little scares, it's the, just the lamest content. It's just walking around gross buildings, which I guess has its own like merit of fun, like urban exploring, but it's just so fucking boring. I did, this isn't ghost hunting, but since I went to University of Tampa, that plant center, the um, plant hall, is considered one of the most haunted places in America, I think, or it might be Florida. And we used to go around there late at night listening for things or looking for things, but there's nothing. There never is anything. It's just fucking boring. So you have to like set it up beforehand for it to be fun content or enjoyable. But I love the ideas of the I love the idea of it. Sick. A creepy translucent figure can be seen standing behind Shane in a doorway. Now, Shane doesn't see the apparition, but he does admit that he Christian heard some strange noises at the time. exact same moment. So could this be the spirit of a former patient of Waverly Hills Sanatorium? As always, I leave it up to you to decide. If you found a great ghost video online or recorded one yourself, please send it my way at nukestop5 at gmail.com. Not clowning around. He has to be self-aware. There's no way he thinks this stuff is real. Are you talking about nuke? Yeah, yeah, he clearly just does it because it's just fun content for him just to compile some of these YouTube videos into a top five. And I agree, it is fun. 
I don't think he actually believes it though. He he also has done like the top or actually no this was it Nuke that used to do the top five gnome sightings? <laughs> Shit like that. I think that was Nuke. Like he just does it because it's fun content, not because he actually believes it. TikTok user Jacob explains in his videos that he's recently inherited his grandmother's house after she passed away. But Jacob says that he can't shake dog. the strange feeling that something in the old house just doesn't want him there. He has and a then gross ass house. Things just get weirder because Jacob finds a creepy old jester doll that belonged to his grandmother. My grandmother's old house. She left it for me, and when I got here, I saw a bunch of cool stuff. And one of the best things is right behind here. Oh yeah. Yeah, what's up, pussy? Come Jeffrey. Jacob says that when he was a child, the sight of the doll used to terrify him. I, I can't he says imagine it why. It doesn't really bother him anymore. But then, late one night, Jacob wakes up to hear knocking coming from his bedroom closet. <laughs> I just heard knocking from the closet. Well, we can at least rule out the possibility that it's the Jester doll. He's just hanging out. The Jester's gonna reach down and tap him on the shoulder. Jester Doll's head has turned. Before, it was facing the bed, but now it is staring right at Jacob as he closes the closet door, almost as if it's keeping an eye on him. Jacob says that he didn't even realize that the doll had moved at the time and only noticed it later when looking back at his footage. Well, then so why did he look Jacob's at it Jacob's grandmother's panic. home is haunted? Could there be an entity attached it's to tier the one creepy Sonya? Jester? Tier one maniac? I'll leave that to you Larissa to Brendan decide. The five gifts of Zavante. A haunted hello. Thank you for that. Christine Wright from the Paranormal Investigation Team, Brian CBS Rookie Paranormal, sets out all alone to explore the so-called, quote, Pirate's Graveyard in Portland, England. The scenic cemetery was built You best start in believing in ghost stories. And has gotten its You're own nickname from the many gravestones that feature carvings of skulls and crossbones. Christine finds herself completely alone when suddenly something happens that she still can't explain to this day. Um, completely out of the way, so nobody. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. What? What? Hi, Miss Swan. Come hello? out of the bushes. Hmm. Sure, I saw somebody shouted hello then, or said hello. Christine is all alone when she hears something behind her, and as she turns, she hears a woman nearby clearly say hello. Um, completely out of the way, so Here's nobody. Oh, hello. In oh. hentai. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh. A bit shocked, she immediately answers back, "Hello," but there's no one there. In fact, there's not even anyone else in the entire area that she's exploring. So could it be that the pirate's graveyard in Portland, England, is haunted by the ghosts of those who are laid to rest there? Probably. Let me know. The Devil Down Below This next creepy video was recorded on an allegedly cursed river in Indonesia. A now, cursed many river? Now, claim that a strange creature what lives the in fuck? this river and surfaces only after dark to prey on its victims. Wouldn't a cursed river... <laughs> I'm getting deep into the quantum realm of curses. But I feel like a cursed river would be like the absolute worst case scenario for everyone because <laughs> as things like they precipitate then it's going to rain down that curse outside of the river. Because I imagine with the river, the curse is in the water, right? 
So that's going to just spread everywhere. Like we're all fucked. It wouldn't be localized to the river anymore. Unless, of course, it's like the, the sediment to the bottom, I guess. And the fish, too. Everything's going to be fucked. So, in the dead of night, four friends set out to attempt to capture video evidence of this alleged mysterious creature. Are so the guys drift along the river in their boat for hours until the they see something bozo. in the water near an abandoned shipwreck. There's some what happens one. next is downright terrifying. <laughs> Oh god damn it. What looks like a pale hand with long red fingers quickly splashes out of the water and snatches at a plastic bottle floating on the surface. Then it just disappears back into the murky depths from which it came. The four friends believe they might have captured the infamous water creature that is said to live in the river. I think we did. But what do you think this is? Let me know. Behind your back. Connor Lyles from Fresno, California is coming home Dude, late one evening when he suddenly hears something right behind him. His doorbell camera captures something downright chilling. <laughs> Get inside, quick! A it's the smile man! can be seen walking from left to right behind Connor. Suddenly it appears again, but now a lot closer. Connor hears something behind him and quickly turns around, but sees no one there. When he checks his doorbell security camera, he sees the bizarre dark figure and realizes that perhaps something was following him. Fake as but fuck, what yeah. do you think is going on here? Is it real? Or I think it it's real. Just an elaborate hoax. Yeah, and on the Twitter there, and on the My table. pants have been browned. Uh, click on one of these links for more scary videos, and hopefully I'll see you back here again next time. Nice. Good browning. Okay, I'm gonna release a little bit of yellow real quick, and then maybe I'll decide if uh, we do one more. Just give me a second though, I'll be right back. Apparently facing up to 26 years in jail. The actor could also face up to $2,000 in fines. $2,000 in fines? Holy shit. <laughs> this is gonna... This is gonna ruin them. <laughs> the, the 26 years is definitely the... Uh, the more apt punishment so far with the Ezra Miller wackiness. This 2000 in fines just feels like it's not even worth mentioning. I don't even know why that's there. That makes it sound like nothing went wrong. Miller was charged in Vermont and appeared remotely on October 17th for a session in the criminal division of the Green Mountain State Superior Court. Charges stem from an incident that occurred August 7th in Vermont where Miller allegedly stole three bottles of liquor from the pantry of a private home. According to Miller's representative, the home was of Miller's childhood friend and the actor believed they were able to enter the home to obtain some rice, some rice wine as they were cooking with their mother. Rep also said Miller did not realize the friend didn't want to be friends anymore. This is such a weird article already. At court on Monday, Miller was told to stay away from the owner of the home as well as another Vermont resident, and the next hearing for this case will be on January 13th, 2023. Of all of the things Ezra Miller has done over the last year, this is the one? This is the one they're finally going after? It's, no, surely they had to have stacked on everything that happened in Hawaii and everything. And it joins incidents in Hawaii, Massachusetts, and North Dakota... These allegations include manipulating, intimidating, endangering, disorderly conduct, throwing chair at a woman, grabbing woman by throat, grooming minors, and more. 
So are all of these wrapped up into this trial, or is that just like side stuff? I, so they really... Wow. All of that <laughs> was given the okay, but stealing some rice wine is where they're finally drawing the, the line in the sand. No, not the rice wine. I'm sorry. 26 years in the slammer. Ignoring the fucking kidnapping, uh, the breaking and entering, the threatening people's lives, throwing chairs at them, and all kinds of crazy shit. Huh? Yeah, it must have been some crazy wine, man. That shit must have went so hard. It's up to 26. Yeah, no, I, I, I can read that. I see that. But even still, you might not want to upload that. People are against AI art now. Well, AI art's always going to be a controversial thing, but it's always in the way that you use it. Uh, it it's... It's not like I was ever going to make a music video for Let's Party, Party, Party tonight. It didn't take a job away from an artist or a director or anything. The only reason I'm going to try and make an AI-generated music video for it is because it'll be fucking hype. But there's always a way to misuse the technology, of course. The art stealing and why use AI when you can pay, when you can pay an artist for stuff. Are you talking about with my AI-generated music video idea? What? What are you talking about? I, I just wanted to give it the lyrics and have it spit out a, a music video to it. That, that's not something I would ever pay anyone to do because I, I just wouldn't have a music video for it. It's a song I made when I was 11 years old. Why the fuck would I want like an actual music video for it? The whole point is to see what AI does with a child's lyrics and a child's song. It's the entire point of the video. Cody Code did that. Oh yeah, I heard he beat me to that, unfortunately. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I feel like it's not the same as mine. It's a fucking CD I have from when I was 11. It's right here. It's not the first person to generate a music video using AI. Far from it. It's just I think it'll be a novel idea to try and turn this... Oh, you can't read that at all. Turn this song into a music video and have the AI fucking meltdown trying to come up with something for it. I mean, there's like great lines in there. Buy six pounds of chocolate, we're gonna lose control. Put on your favorite jam now, we're gonna break parole. So, I think it could be, I think it will be cool. <clears throat> There's new Rooster Teeth drama. There's a video that leaked of Caden saying a ton of racist remarks. Well, I can assure you I can't watch that on stream if there's like actual slurs and shit in there. I'll just check in on the situation after stream then. Goddamn. What a disaster for Rooster Teeth. Or, you know, it could even be viewed as a positive thing for Rooster Teeth. This is the first time anyone's talked about Rooster Teeth in the last fucking five years. I don't think they stand to gain anything from this, but it's certainly the first time people have heard that name in many moons. The Ryan Haywood grooming. <laughs> oh, true. True. Okay, it's been two years then since the last time people heard Rooster Teeth. And it was for, for fucking grooming back then. True. What happened with Rooster Teeth? You mean outside of the drama? I, I've already talked about it a lot, but the, the long and short of it is they just legitimately fell off. That kind of content just stopped being as popular as it used to be, and they never really changed it. Just kept doing it, still keep doing it, and people are just kind of tired of it, so they just watch other things. They do have, like, other channels that do pretty well, like Rooster Teeth-owned channels that still do fine, like Death Battle and all that. It's just, like, the main Rooster Teeth hub. Like Jake Gyllenhaal in your yearbook? I really don't, though. I wish. I look like Jake Gyllenhaal my ass. He's talking about someone posted, someone from my old high school posted my yearbook <laughs> where uh, my where I have like a little page in there. Where, where was it? Here, I'll pull it up. It's cute. I, I wonder who it was, though. I went to a school with a graduating class of like 32, so it's... There's not a whole lot of room for it to be someone I don't know. Uh, actually, I shouldn't pull this up because it has classmates' full names in there. Here, I'll just show you my page then. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> this, is, this is so bad. Um, here, I, I gotta be tactical here. Because the next page has someone else's information on it. So you only get this one page here where I'm chasing my own three-pointer here. Of course, I drained it, as you would expect. Obviously. And there's me again. But look at that. Look at that wingspan, though. God damn. Could swat a plane out of the air with that. No beard, I know. 
I didn't grow the beard till sophomore year of college, and it was for the Hunger Games, and I just never shaved. One girl I was talking to at the time said she liked my beard, and I was like, all right, so this will be the rest of my life, I guess. <laughs> Thanks to the resub pumpkin. You look normal height in these pictures. You guys legitimately don't get it. Everyone in my normal friend group is 6'1 or above. So I just always look super short in every fucking video. I 5'6 is not like alarmingly short height. It's below average, but it's not like alarmingly short. Matt is 6'5. Andrew is 6'5. Uh, Danny is 6'1. Like literally everyone I'm around. Chase, I think, is 6'2. Aaron is 6'1. Literally everyone I am around is just way, like way fucking tall. Yep, class of 2012, the year the Mayan calendar convinced people the world might explode or something. But I told you I used to be a ball player. Yes, sir. Man, I could have gone pro. Can't show the first photo because the people next to me have like their whole name there. So I can't really pull that one up. It, it's just this. This is just what I looked like. So this is just, that was my, my normal yearbook photo. Just this smiling. Weren't you trying to get laid before the apocalypse at that time? Yeah. I was in a race against the clock to lose my virginity before the earth blew up just in case. I had all kinds of like protocol, like, uh, like t not time limits because it's not like a time trial in a game, but like I I'd go out as much as possible, as often as possible to try and maximize my chances of getting laid because I knew I only had till December of that year. I failed. So if the world really did end in 2012, I would have died a virgin. So th thank God the Mayans got that one wrong, huh? We're all the better for it. Weren't you scared that day? Yeah. Of course, everyone was. I spent that day playing Halo 4, which is really sad because Halo 4's multiplayer was awful. Are you good at basketball for real? Uh, I'm not that good anymore. I just don't play often. Last time I played was with Mr. Beast. And I was doing well. I can still, I can still hit threes pretty well, but my... Cardio's not great, so I can't actually get up and down the court super well. But when I'm there, I can make plays. I can still wheel and deal a bit. You let them win? No, they didn't win. We won. Well, at least in the first game. I think. I actually... Now no, I'm blanking on it. I'm pretty sure we did. Is Moonfall worth watching? I think it is the best bad movie that's ever been made. Bar none. What's the update on Amaranth? Uh, she's safe... She even streamed today, but I don't know what's going on with, like, her and her husband, if they're staying together or not. It's still kind of vague. That I couldn't tell you. All I know is that it seems like she's healthier, <laughs> like, already. Talking about, like, able to get some, like, sleep and do, like, streams she wants to do with normal hours. But past all, like, the surface level stuff, no idea. All I know is what you guys know. Take on mullets? I think mullets look like shit, but they're making a huge comeback right now. I don't know what's going on, but like the trashiest fashion is becoming popular again. Fucking mustaches are back. Mullets are back. It's so weird. I don't know why. I see them pretty often now, though. Like, I think they work for some people, but on the whole, like... God damn, come on. You're describing me right now. Well, this isn't like an intervention, man. Like I said, I think it can work for some people, but just as like a general trend, it won't work. Oh, I've looked at the mullet championships, actually. They're pretty cool. That and the uh, wacky beard ones are pretty awesome. They do these things all the time for beards and mullets and shit. He's a Can the tier one extinct. And we sub Jonah and he kill Hikikomori. Dude, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I keep up. Martha Stewart posted a thirst trap on Twitter as an ad. I actually saw that on Twitter. She went in there with overalls and nothing over, uh, nothing underneath. Reminds me of that, um... What's her name on YouTube? The older lady with absolutely massive tits who for some reason wears no bra nothing and then just overalls and gives you like very base level information on motorcycle maintenance does anyone know what i'm talking about i believe leon lush did a video on her a long time ago put her on no i absolutely can't there is no chance it is always cold in that factory 
No one knows her name? Fuck, fine, I'll find it real quick. But yeah, this is basically what Martha Stewart did, taking a page out of her playbook. Uh, it wasn't just motorcycles, she does product oh, reviews. Her name's Biker Stuff. Reading the comments is always such an adventure. <laughs> yeah, Biker Stuff. Inspiration behind your cat's name? I don't know, Tiana came up with it. It's like one of the moons of Jupiter or something. There's Arisa Biawa. Um, one short in and already seen a nip slip. Yeah, that's the beauty of biker stuff. You get a product review and a little nipple reveal, reveal from time to time. And the comments catalog every single one.